Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guests today are with the upcoming exhibit at Gilded Pear Gallery. Gallery manager Lauren Tucci is here. Hi, Lauren. Thanks for being here. Hi, Dennis. And uh, joining us from various locations, including Iowa City, are two of the artists featured in the upcoming exhibit. Diego Lasansky. Hi, Diego. Hi, Dennis. Thanks for having us. And Adam Rake. Adam, thank you for being here. Hi, Dennis. Thank you. So the, uh, the new exhibit at the uh, Gilded Pair Gallery, Selections from the Lasansky Workshop, it's just, it's, it's all the Lasanskys. Kind of the, the kind of the first family of Iowa City artists, and you've got just darn near all of them involved. Uh, and of course, at the at the same time, Lauren, as the uh, exhibit at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, which features uh, Tomas and Charlie. Correct. So the only, the uh, only one that we're not featuring in the show is their grandfather. So it's all of the uh, living artists. And I'm guessing that's not a coincidence that this is all happening kind of at the same time. Correct. <laughs> so Diego and I asked you to do this a little bit before we even started the interview kind of you know we Lasansky is such a like I said it's it's the first name in Iowa City art really and you know in printmaking first in the country or the world but it's also a big family so Mauricio uh your grandfather uh not the first artist in the family but that's kind of that's kind of where things start right Yep. So Mauricio came to, especially Iowa City, where he lived then the remainder of his life, but came to the United States in 1943 um, on a Guggenheim Fellowship. And that's really when his journey as an artist in printmaking started. Um, he worked for two years with a group called the Atelier 17 and then slowly uh, started looking for teaching positions at the time and accepted a teaching position at the University of Iowa in 1945. And that's really when his career as uh, a well-known printmaker started. Um, so he is, like, like you said, Dennis, my grandfather, and really the first strong printmaker artist in the family. And from there, um, he had six kids that went into the arts in some fashion. And you are the son of the, the one non-artist. Yes, that's right. My father, Phil, was a lawyer uh, who started the family corporation and gallery that is still here in Iowa City today that houses my grandfather's work in archives. So um, he lived here and passed away in 2020. And, you're, and for our audience, too, your brother Emiliano is a jazz musician and currently touring as a member of the Herbie Hancock Jazz Institute Ensemble, which is one of the one of the top uh, education and teaching ensembles in the country. That's right. He's one of many other family members that stayed within the arts, although didn't stick with just visual arts. So coming from a family of such a strong arts, you know, there's a lot of influence, whether it's in music or dance or creative writing or and Adam, Adam Rake, uh, you are not a Lasansky by blood, but you've been a part of the studio and the art scene there with the family since you said 2005? That's right. That's right. I, I came out to Iowa City in 2004 uh, with the hopes of maybe working with the family. Uh, I came from Philadelphia, actually, and uh, I learned about the Lasansky family as an undergraduate printmaking student. And uh, I actually first saw Thomas's work through a professor who had grown up in Iowa City and had some of Thomas's pieces, and I was very struck by them. And then uh, in our history of printmaking course, uh, as a senior in my last year of my uh, undergrad, we went to the Philadelphia Museum and they would bring out prints from all throughout different time periods in history. In the 20th century, they showed several of Mauricio's pieces. And I said, what's going on in Iowa City? And uh, so I, I decided to make the trek out and take some workshops at the university and, and finally met the family. And after a year, Thomas uh, let me start working at the workshop. And it, 17, 27 years later, here you are. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, Lauren, tell me a little bit about the uh, about the exhibit overall. You have pieces from nearly the entire Lasansky family as well as uh, as well as Adam. Correct. Yep. Uh, we have six artists. Uh, we have Adam Rake. We have Diego. We also have Charlie Thomas and um, 
we're kind of introducing Amadeo's photographs uh, in this group as well. The, um, uh, and Rory, not to, uh, not to forget Rory either, um, he has some really beautiful drawings upstairs. Um, so what I kind of did for the show is that um, so the mo some of the more statement uh, large works uh, on either pan uh, paper or canvas are down here on the first level. And then upstairs are the more like kind of intimate works, things that you wanna maybe spend a little more time with or something to get a little closer to. Um, and so we have everything from drawings, uh, mixed media collage, uh, uh, traditional printmaking, and then um, photographs. For those who are watching the video, uh, what are we seeing behind you? Uh, so right above my shoulder here is Frida's, uh, Frida, um, Charlie's work. Uh, this is mixed media collage. There are tons of different elements in that piece. You could spend probably a, uh, a good long while just looking at all of, all of what's going on in there. There's a lot of detail. Um, and then uh, right next to it is Adam Rake's piece. Um, I don't remember the title only because it's long, uh, <laughs> um, but it's a really beautiful piece um, inspired by a, a Dutch artist. And you can see that the, you can't really see in the video, but um, there's a ton of detail in it. Uh, we spent you know an hour talking about it one day. And um, uh, on the pillar there, uh, if you're watching the video, video there are the smaller uh, photographs by Amadeo uh, in black and white of uh, an American flag and uh, in abstract form. And then also Diego's Thelonious Monk, uh, the high priestess of Bebop uh, over there in red. Well, and, and again, for this audience, having, having art that features Monk is uh, extra points there, Diego. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's upstairs. <laughs> so, um, Diego and Adam, talk to me a little bit about about printmaking. And you know, obviously, this is uh, you know, it's it's not what everybody in the family does, but you know, it's something that the the two of you did, and something that Diego, that uh, Mauricio, of course. Uh, we talked already talked about that being so, uh, you know, such a, you know, he was such a, a pioneer and such a, a towering figure in that uh, even today. Um, it's kind of the family business, obviously, but mm -hmm. what, uh, you know, all, but something that, uh, you know, a, a, you've seen and been a part of ever since you were a little kid. So Diego, uh, would you start and talk about, you know, how your interest in this, you know, came about? Was it because of, or maybe even in spite of? your environment? You know, I think the thing that the audience especially should remember and a good thing to learn and something that I think a lot of people learn early on and just as they're introduced to printmaking is printmaking back to the even 15th, 16th century was really used as a commercial reproductive media um, that artists were attracted to for many different reasons. And I think Adam could speak to it a little different because he wasn't introduced to it from a family perspective. Um, but I think just to briefly talk about why an artist might choose printmaking, you know, I think uh, it's a it's for someone who has a love in working in multiples and really working out an image over a period of time um, and being able to use the tool. So our family really has dived really dove into an interest in intaglio printmaking which is often referred to as metal plate printmaking um, but there are many different genres that a lot of people would be familiar with like woodblock and lithography and silkscreen um, but to kind of talk a little bit about how i was introduced into it of course being in a family of so many artists means um, in vacations you're going to museums and you're going to visit other family members studios and things so um, i have very distinct memories as my brother does of never really being pushed into the arts but you know, as a kid, you didn't go to Disney, Disneyland, you went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and you went to see other family members and seeing family working at a very high level in the arts was something that was very interesting, seeing the success and seeing, you know, the ways that they were really making their voice spoken in the world um, through their art. So that was really interesting for my brother and I. And of course, we both gravitated to the arts, but in sort of different medias. 
Um, but for me, the interest really started when I started working in junior high for my uncle Tomas and working for him really as a studio assistant and doing everything from cleaning the dishes to helping prep frames and canvases um, for him to work on. And I think Adam could speak a little bit about this as well. When you're in an environment of an artist, say a studio, and you're using the tools, organizing the tools and watching someone work with them, it's very hard not to get inspired to create your own things. Um, and so through high school, I really learned a lot of the tools of the trade um, and then really sort of got an interest in trying to create my own work. So um, it was something that happened very organically. I was not ever pushed into the arts. I was never forced or even told to go draw. It was just something that my interest developed, which I think is why I'll be able to continue it so strongly through a career lifetime. Yeah, it, it, it is all about, you know, how you grow up and, you know, not being forced into something, but just having it be all around you. Or as I like to say sometimes, well, some families bowl. Yeah. Adam, how did you, how did you come to this art? Well, uh, one of the main aspects of printmaking is process. And so uh, it adds this element of having to deal with uh, the steps that are required to actually get the image into the medium, whether that's intaglio or you're putting an image into a copper plate or whether it's lithography and you're putting an image on a stone or an aluminum plate. Uh, you have to contend with this process. And what I loved about that was no matter what idea I had in my head, as soon as you integrate it into the process, it slightly shifts it and changes it. And so it gives you something to respond to. So in that way, there's a kind of dialogue that, that it kind of emerges between yourself and the medium. And uh, for me, that made a lot of sense. The idea of a blank canvas or a blank sheet of paper always really kind of filled me with anxiety. And there was something about bringing that intermediary uh, process in between that it, it kind of cre uh, created an aspect of discovery there for me. And I, and I love that about printmaking. And the other thing is it's, it's very much based in, in drawing in the sense that most all printmaking techniques require you to come up with a language of mark making that allows you to either turn on the mark or turn off the mark where you want it in the image so that you're, you're, you're kind of building with this binary system of on off mark making and layering. And, and interestingly, for such an old technology that goes all the way back to, you know, with Intaglio, it goes back to the early Renaissance, uh, you know, we live in an age now where most of the imagery and information that we, we receive comes from that same kind of binary on-off technology. Um, and all of modern printing is done this way. All of computer code is done this way. And so it's kind of become an interesting uh, corollary to to the modern world that we're living in now as well and so the printmaking sensibility kind of has some interesting implications there for for our contemporary experience too that I find really meaningful uh, and that kind of informs some of the newer work that I'm making now that kind of tries to use some of the uh, the aspects of uh, of the digital uh, realm that has been created over the last 15 years or so since the the iPhone has been on yeah it is the is there a digital aspect is there is uh, how how is the advent of digital art affecting or transforming printmaking well in a sense i mean a lot of times it's interesting because printmaking often gets confused as being uh purely for the means of reproduction or mass production and you know artists like andy warhol using silkscreen you know he actually brought that aesthetic of mass production into the fine art realm by actually trying to use kind of more graphic imagery, uh, photography based imagery to create a connection between mass culture and the individual uh, and, and bring meaning uh, to that. And, and so artists are constantly having to deal with, with how technology uh, changes the way society perceives things. And, you know, with the with the magnitude of change that came with the computer age and especially the age of the smartphone, uh, which is very new still, you know, 2006 is when the iPhone comes in. That's the primary way people engage with, with content and imagery and also ideas. And so, you know, that aesthetic naturally is going to creep into to the artist's work and how they use that language because it's the way that people are engaging with the world. So, um, 
so for instance, you know, you can, you can source a lot of imagery very, very quickly uh, on, because there's so much collected on the internet. So you can find and compose and, and get ideas uh, that you can then bring into the work very efficiently. And there's all kinds of techniques in printmaking that would allow you to, um, you know, to grab imagery and, and incorporate it into the work in the way that like say traditionally in intaglio printmaking, uh, you might use a technique called soft ground where you might take an actual texture that already exists in the world and be able to press it into a medium that allow, will allow you to etch it into the plate and you can capture these things from the world. Well, digital technology, since everything's recorded, allows you to actually capture different kinds of imagery and content that you can then bring into the work in a, in a really interesting way. Right, I think to just briefly touch on that, I mean, I think the to really answer your question in sort of an interesting way is people often think how is digital technology used in art and initially people think photography right they think how are you using photography in art and does that correlate and work and merge with printmaking when i think to speak a little bit about what adam's saying it's not just photography right it's it's the digital aspects are just helping move the media forward. So in a way, rather than actually sometimes using a fabric, if you can't get it or you want to use a rare old fabric that might be in a library, today digital photography helps you take those things that might be cataloged online and use them in the work in a way you once would have done with the actual fabric. So it really is just used as another tool um, in the process. And some artists use it so you can look at the final piece and say, oh, there's a digital aspect to this. And other artists use it no different than they'd use an eraser. And it merges so well, you'd never really know. Selections from the Lasansky Workshop up at the Gilded Pear Gallery, and you've got a reception and uh, public events coming up. Lauren, tell us about those. Yep. Our uh, public reception is this Friday, uh, June 10th, from 5 to 7.30. Um, the rest of the show runs until uh, August 20th, and so it's a, a nice full summer of um, being able to see the work in space and see it up close. Plenty of time to uh, to see the work of uh, Diego and Adam, other members of the Lasansky family, including uh, Tomas and Charlie, in addition to their work, which is on display at the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. And I'm actually going to have Sean Ulmer and uh, Kate Cuno in, in an upcoming culture crawl to talk about that exhibit, too. So it's just uh, it's kind of all Lasansky's all the time. The summer days. of Lasansky. <laughs> That's right. The summer of Lasansky's. Well, Diego and Adam, thanks so much for joining me today. Been uh, fascinating hearing about your art and looking forward to uh, seeing it and seeing you at the Gilded Pear Gallery. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, thank you so much. And Lauren, thanks as always. And if people want more information, they can, of course, visit you on Facebook or your website, which is? GildedPearGallery.com. Thank you all again for being with me today. Thanks, Dennis. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or however you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.